Welcome to Ambassador Radio. Hello and welcome to another edition of Ambassador Radio. I'm your host, Justin Bass. I'm an elder at Bass Chapel Baptist Church in Sigourneville, Tennessee. Today we're going to be looking at the... SBC24 hashtag on the X, formerly known as Twitter. Um, Bass Chapel is no longer a Southern Baptist church, but it doesn't mean that we don't care about what goes on in the Southern Baptist Convention. It is widely known. It's the largest Protestant denomination that says it's not a denomination um, on the planet. So, as the SBC goes, much of Christendom goes. The Southern Baptist Convention sends missionaries all over the world. They plant churches in North America. They lobby the government through the ERLC, Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission. Um, So... It's very important. There's six seminaries, and I don't remember the number. I've heard it multiple times. But those six seminaries train, uh, I think, more than half of the pastors in the United States, uh, in addition to missionaries that go around the world. So it is important what goes on in the Southern Baptist Convention. Bass Chapel was a member of the SBC for 70 years. So Bass Chapel started in 1948. Five years later, they joined the Southern Baptist Convention. And then on January 1st of 2023, we left the convention. We still love the people in the Southern Baptist Convention. We just felt convicted that um, we couldn't really donate to any of the entities at that point. Um, under conscience because of some of the things that were going on. So if we couldn't give money, we were convicted that we should leave. Um, It's my understanding probably for a decade before my family even came to Bass Chapel that we didn't give to the Southern Baptist Convention through the cooperative program. Um, So given that, Uh, I was really about the only person at the church that had strong ties to the SBC. Um, I led Royal Ambassadors for the association. And to be a part of the Holston Valley Baptist Association, you have to be an SBC church. So it, it broke my heart to not be able to do that. But the overall scheme of things, it's, it's God's sovereign plan um, that these things happen and not being part of the role ambassadors. Yeah, it hurt because it had meant so much to me over all those years, but Bass Chapel, I think is able to better serve the kingdom in other ways. We donate to other missionaries through other missions organizations The Southern Baptist Convention is not the only missions organization on the planet. There are a lot of smaller ones that we're able to have relationships with those people. Um, Even the Deeply Rooted Conference, that is really a missions organization in and of itself. And it was birthed right at Bass Chapel between a conversation between uh, me and Pastor Dave. So things that we do here... Um, throughout the year with Deeply Rooted Conference. Um, Yeah, we do charge for the main conference that'll be November 8th and 9th this year. We'll have a lot of our local guys speaking. We'll also have Justin Peters and Tim Challies coming in for that. So because we buy plane tickets and things like that, we do charge for that. But we have things going on every single month of the year with Deeply Rooted that we don't charge for. So Bass Chapel helps support Deeply Rooted Conference financially. Um, So 
that's kind of our local missions arm. We've got some international missionaries that we help support. Um, so we just were convicted that because of things in the SBC, a lot of it with the North American Mission Board, um, the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission, some of the seminaries, you know, it was not sound theologically. But we love the SBC. We pray that the SBC will turn back conservatively. Um, you know, every year it seems like there's a hope that that'll happen. A few years ago, Mike Stone, a very uh, sound guy, was up for president. He lost. Um, Tom Askell, super sound guy. He's the president of Founders Ministries. He was up. He lost. This year, there were a couple of guys that were sound. One, Jared Moore. One, uh, David Allen. David Allen was actually uh, fired from Southwestern Seminary, basically because he wasn't woke. So, he he's a sound guy. But both of those guys lost this year um, in the presidential race. So, we'll just go through these tweets. I'm looking at the hashtag SBC24. So, the first one is from Jeff Wright. And it says, that feeling, you know, and this may be very boring if I'm just reading tweets, but we'll see how it goes. That feeling, you know, this is a picture of Brent Leatherwood. Brent Leatherwood is the president of the ERLC. ERLC, uh, a year or two ago, they signed on to a petition to kill an abolition of abortion bill in Louisiana. Um, so there's a couple of positions when it comes to abortion. One is an incrementalist position, which Leatherwood would attest to. The other is abolition. Um, the abolitionist movement would say that it is, it should be criminalized to get an abortion. And that means penalties for the mother. And some people don't like that. Um, but if you murder your child outside the womb, there are penalties, right? So if there are penalties, there should be equal penalties when you're inside the womb. But there are no states currently that have penalties for the mother for murdering her child in the womb. Um, our friends at the Imago Day, they're very uh, strong advocates for the abolitionist movement so that there would be penalties. If it's a crime to kill your child in the womb, then people are less likely to do it. Um, so, anyway, that's a little background on, on Leatherwood and the ERLC. It says, That feeling when you know your cronies will protect your job no matter how evil you act. And like I said, it's a picture of Brent Leatherwood from the microphone. And yeah, it's it's kind of a, a a smug attitude that churches give to the cooperative program, and it divides the money up amongst the entities. And when they're being funded by people that they don't represent, that's one reason we couldn't, in good conscience, give to the cooperative program. Now, an SBC church can give directly to an entity. They don't have to give through the cooperative program. So if an SBC church wanted to just donate money, say, to Midwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, then they can do directly to that seminary. Or if they just want to give to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, that's for international missionaries. That would be another option they could do. But giving to the cooperative program, some money is going to the ERLC, however wicked they may be. Um, so here's some memes. It's probably not going to go, do good on radio. Uh, oh, so another one from Jeff Wright. It says, me, after SBC 24, voted down not one, but two of the best presidential candidates in decades. We already mentioned those guys. Uh, the guy who won was uh, Clint Presley. 
So from what I understand, Presley is an okay guy. He was in favor of a law amendment we'll mention in a minute but he's i've also heard he's pretty woke um on social justice things along those lines but of the two finalists so there were six candidates for sbc president two of them were very woke um they got knocked out pretty early along with jared moore who was probably the best candidate it left uh presley Another guy, I can't remember his name, and David Allen. So in that first runoff, David Allen, uh, he was third, so he lost uh, very closely. He was very close to being the number two guy, but nope, only the top two make it to the made it to the last round. And of the two finalists, Presley was the better option. Um, so that is some kind of good news. Anyway, back to the tweets. Uh, they voted down not one, but two of the best presidential candidates in decades. Rejected all financial transparency. So what's that, what that's referring to is asking NAM, N-A-M-B, the North American Mission Board, to show where they're spending the money. So the North American Mission Board is, is a very problematic part of the SBC. They plant air quotes churches but it's really not planting churches it's they'll call a bible study on a tuesday night in a coffee shop a church plant many 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 of what they're calling church plants are actually being pastored by women well they're not every man is qualified to pastor but there are zero women qualified to pastor it'll be a lot of times they'll say the pastor team is like a husband and wife no, that doesn't work. And don't call a coffee shop Tuesday night Bible study a church plant. A church plant would have really three, it would be more, but three essential things. Well, A, they worship with the word on the Lord's Day. So if it calls itself a church and it doesn't meet on the Lord's Day, it's not a church. It's a glorified Bible study. There, there are members so you would have meeting on the Lord's Day. You would have church discipline. And you would have the sacraments. Um, if you don't have those three things, you're not really a church. You're maybe just a glorified Bible study. So meeting on the Lord's Day for worship, church discipline, and the sacraments which is baptism and Lord's Supper. Um, but anyway, so they rejected financial transparency. So they're, they're hiding how much the employees of the North American Mission Board make, um, which is not a, a good thing when it's a 501c3. You know, at, at our church, at Bass Chapel, we have a budget. It's public to anybody that wants to look at our budget. We... Every time we have a business meeting, we have on that report how much money we spent and who we spent it to. Um, same thing with uh, Deeply Rooted Conference. Deeply Rooted is a 501c3. Um, we have no employees. Everybody does everything volunteer. We do pay some money to speakers at the major conference, at the main conference in the fall. But... We we really just give free books <laughs> to our speakers throughout the year, so this is you know something that if anybody wants to ask what we spend our money on, we can just give them a copy of our bank statement and say, yeah, here's how we've spent the money at Deeply Rooted Conference. Uh, same thing with our church, um, and then lastly, it says and failed to pass the law amendment. Now, we may get into the law amendment here in a, minute, in a minute, but the law amendment, it was brought by a pastor named Mike Law, and it was to amend the Constitution of the Southern Baptist Convention to say that only qualified men can hold the office of pastor. So we already touched on that a little bit with issues with the North American Mission Board, 
but this was to codify it in the Constitution. And there were many people who were in favor of this. There were many people who were against this. And there are different reasons people were against this. It seems like a no-brainer, right? You know, the Bible plainly teaches that the office of elder is for qualified men only, according to uh, First uh, Timothy, according to Titus. And First Timothy also says that a woman shall remain silent in church. A woman is not to have authority over a man, and this is a creation ordinance um, because it came from Adam and Eve. Adam was formed first, right? The woman was formed out of the man. It's not saying that women are less important than men, less valuable than men. It's saying we got roles. God gave us roles, and the role for pastor elder, shepherd, overseer, presbyter, episcopos, um, bishop. I don't know if I said that, but it's all one office and it is for qualified men only. So the law amendment was going to say, okay, this is the thing that we're codifying this into the constitution. And some of the people against it said that it was uh, not necessary because it's already in the Baptist Faith and Message of 2000, which is the governing uh, confession of faith of the Southern Baptist Convention. Now, by default, and this is debated too, but by default, if you're a Southern Baptist Church, you your confession is the 2000 Baptist Faith and Message. Now, many Southern Baptist churches have other confessions, including the one we adhere to at Bass Chapel, the Second London Baptist. Um, but by default, you adhere to the 2000 Baptist Faith and Message, and it plainly says the office of pastor is for men only. Um, anyway, let's keep going. We'll come back to the law amendment in a sec because there's an article by Denny Burke that kind of talks about this. Um here is a tweet by David Mitzenmacher. I don't know who that is. But it says, not to be outdone by a race car. Well, the North American Mission Board had a race car at their display. So a lot of people were flipping out over that. I thought it was kind of funny. But I don't know how much money they spent on it. But that it just goes along with the issues of the lack of financial transparency. Uh, maybe somebody donated the race car. I don't know. They just put some stickers on it. Because it was in Indy, right? Indianapolis is where this convention was held. So they wanted to do something that was related to the uh, area. So the Indy 500. They had an Indy car. All right. So, but anyway, somebody made a, a Photoshop picture of the founder's booth. And they put like a... a early 90s Toyota pickup truck there. It says, not to be outdone by a race car, we brought Tom Askell's 35-year-old Toyota pickup truck to the founder's booth. So that was pretty funny. Um, anyway, the Denny Burke article, I read this earlier, so I'll just briefly comment on it. Um, so the heading says, what does the failure of the law amendment mean? Does it mean that Southern Baptists want to keep the door open to female pastors? Hardly. I explain why in the link below. So in this article, he mentions, yeah, last year, two churches were disfellowshipped from the Southern Baptist Convention because they called women as pastors. This year, another church was disfellowshipped for calling a woman as a pastor. Now, some people will brag saying there are 1,200 churches in the Southern Baptist Convention that have females as pastors. And the debate sometimes goes, well, the senior pastor has to be a man, but any other pastor can be a female. Well, in the Bible, and that is our ultimate and final authority, there's no such thing as a senior pastor or a youth pastor or a worship pastor or a kids pastor or this pastor, or that pastor, or a executive pastor, or a pastor emeritus. There is only pastor. So, if a church calls 
a woman the children's pastor, that would be against scripture. Now, she may not really be serving as a pastor. Maybe they're just trying to be cute in using the title, but words mean things. And the title pastor means something. So it just causes confusion whenever that happens. Now, there may be churches that have a female as a, say, like a youth director. Well, they don't call her the youth pastor, but she functions as a pastor. And that's more damaging than if somebody's not really functioning as a pastor and they just have the title children's pastor or something like that on there. But there are lots of churches that have female youth directors. Well, youth is not really a category because you're either a child or you're an adult. This idea of adolescence is a modern creation. You're considered an adult. You hit the teenage years, you're an adult. So if a, a woman can teach women, a woman can teach children, really once a guy turns 13, he should not be taught by women anymore in the church setting. And I say in the church setting. We see instances in scripture where women instructed men privately. It's perfectly fine for a wife, if she knows more theologically than a husband, to teach her husband privately. But she needs to be quiet in the church setting because that is what scripture has commanded. Um, and that means a woman is not to preach. A woman is not to teach men. A woman is not to lead in the church because God has ordained that that is a role for qualified men. And we want to make sure we say qualified men. Every man is not qualified to be a pastor. So... Anyway, back to the Denny Burke article. Um, he mentions in there, uh, boom, it was like no time after this came down today that major mainstream media was uh, having their headlines. Uh, Southern Baptist Convention leaves door open for female pastors. Well, that's not 100% accurate because as I said before, they disfellowship churches that call women as pastors. But it's, a lot of times it's just, well, if they're not blatant about it, we'll just turn a blind eye. We'll, we're not going to go looking for this. And there are a lot of guys that are, that are stand-up guys, and they're saying, okay, no, these churches are doing this thing. They're violating Scripture blatantly, and we need to address it. And praise God for it. Maybe through those men... As God so wills, we'll see another conservative resurgence. Um, this happened in the 80s and 90s. As the Southern Baptist Convention had gone liberal, God showed mercy. That never happens. D denominations never go back conservative once they go liberal. Southern Baptist Convention was liberal in the 70s. They denied essential doctrines. They denied substitutionary atonement. They denied the virgin birth. They denied the uh, literal six-day creation. They have they denied everything. They denied the inerrancy of Scripture. And through the Lord using men like Adrian Rogers to bring the convention back into a conservative direction, they they came back and that never ever happened look at the united methodist church now they're not a church anymore they have abandoned scripture altogether look at the liberal lutherans the liberal presbyterians the pcusa it's not a church anymore it's just a social club the uh liberal uh, lutherans the e ELCA, I was trying to say ERLC, but it's the ELCA, Evangel Lutheran Church in America. They've abandoned scripture. They're no longer a church. But God had grace upon the Southern Baptist Convention, and he brought them back in a conservative direction. Now, there's debate today, and, and that we may cover that here in a sec, because I saw a tweet talking about 
the, their note. Yeah, there it is. But I'll look at that in a minute. I wanted to touch on this one before we get to that. Um, but be thinking about, are there any liberals in the Southern Baptist Convention? That is a good question. But here's a tweet from David Morrill. Um, he is the host of Protestia, Rider at Protestia. It's a website. It's a discernment ministry. But he made a motion. It was called out of order. So he's saying, hey, this other guy made a motion in a similar manner that I did, and it wasn't called out of order. And he's saying, well, it must be because this other guy is a... Uh, uh, SBC insider and I'm just a troublesome pew sitter there may be some truth to that um, but anyway back to this idea of are there really liberals in the SBC well it depends on how you define liberal we want to define this as theologically liberal we don't we're not talking about politically liberal um, there's definitely politically liberal people in the SBC, and they are they're um, they're deceived, and there are a lot of conservative pastors who are afraid to make statements because some of their members may be politically liberal. Now, if they're really a Christian, then it means they're immature Christians. Because you cannot vote Democrat if you're a Christian because of the platform of the Democratic Party. Um, they're pro-abortion and they're pro-LGBT, all that stuff. Those two things are 180 degrees from obedience to the Word of God. Now, there may be people who... They're immature Christians, and they would maybe support those things because of ignorance. But once you're educated on the issue, the Holy Spirit will convict you that those things are sin, and you cannot partner with them. Now, saying that, does it mean that you have to vote Republican? No. I mean, because most of the Republican candidates... They're not Christians either, but they, they play a game and they play the role. But this isn't about elections. We're talking about Southern Baptist Convention. Um, talking about theological liberalism. We think about J. Gresham Machen, his book, Christianity and Liberalism. So liberalism denied the supernatural parts of the Bible. They denied the sufficiency of Scripture. They denied the inerrancy they denied all those things that we kind of talked about earlier that was happening in the 70s. They were liberals. Now, are there liberals in the pews and the pulpits sometimes in Southern Baptist churches? Uh, maybe. But, you know, this, this little post here that I'm looking at, it's from a guy named Garrett Robinson. I don't know anything about him, but... He's, he's making the point that there aren't any actual liberals in the SBC, um, and that there's very few actual moderates in the SBC. Well, that is totally not true. Um, you, might, you can find some pastors, I'm sure, that they're squishy. They may believe in the inerrancy, in the infallibility of Scripture, but they're not willing to discipline church members. Well, we said earlier what the marks of a true church includes church discipline. So part of that is if you are denying substitutionary atonement, then that is grounds for church discipline. If you don't understand it and you're teachable, that's a different thing than saying, I understand it and I'm denying it. So, yeah, there are moderates and there are conservatives who are just afraid of man and the fear of man is really i think the biggest problem in the sbc the 11th commandment everybody talks about in the sbc thou shalt not talk negatively about another person in the sbc so the uh 
the graphic. It, it even shows Beth Moore, who's not SBC anymore. She used to be, but she left because she's a liberal, because she's a lady that likes to preach. Um, but she is. She would. She wouldn't even deny those things that we talk about in infallibility of scripture. But you know what? She denies the the sufficiency of scripture. Maybe we'll talk about Beth Moore another day. I don't know. But when she says she gets um, messages from God to go brush a man's hair in an airport, and that's not a joke. That's literally what she said one time. Um, no, she she's denying the sufficiency of scripture. Um, but yeah, there are people who are possibly conservative, but they're afraid of making statements about people who are actually liberal because they love a paycheck and loving a paycheck above the Lord does cause problems. All right, let's keep reading. Let's see what we got. Midwestern seminary, which is my favorite of the SBC seminaries. Um, Jason Allen is the president there. He's done a great job. They've got an undergrad school called Spurgeon College. They have the Spurgeon Archives. Uh, I'd like to go visit that someday. I listen to Jason Allen's podcast. I listen to Al Mohler's podcast from Southern Seminary. Al Mohler's a different story too. Um, but uh, Jason Allen, let's see what this Midwestern seminary, it's a video clip, I'm not going to play that, but it says, we exist for the church, Southern Baptist churches are not a hindrance to our ministry, they are our ministry. So, each of the seminaries gives a report. Jeff Wright, here's another one, talking about Brent Leatherwood's evil cover-up of the material breaking up. Also, how many times can, he's talking about Matt Walsh. Um, who is a Roman Catholic blogger talking about the, uh, the school shooting in Nashville that happened last year. Um, there was another mention of the law amendment failing. Those with the deepest pockets will continue to tolerate female pastors because the feminists in the SBC will protect the men who will stand up for them, going the way of the world, ignoring what the Bible says. And that was from Terry Green. She usually posts some, some good stuff. Oh, here's another funny one. Somebody made a motion, and this is from Protestia on Twitter, slash X, that they wanted to ban all Calvinism and Reformed theology from Southern Baptist life. Uh, so the funny thing about that, the Southern Baptist Convention was founded 100% by churches that adhered to a Calvinistic um, confession of faith. So most of them wouldn't do the Second London Baptist Confession of Faith because, why? We had just come out of a war with England. You don't want to um, adhere to a British confession of faith. But the New Hampshire Confession is, was basically a copycat. So they they adhered to a Calvinistic um, confession of faith. Every church that founded the SBC, people forget that. And God is sovereign in all things. So this guy wanted to ban Calvinism. Well, that means banning at least half of the seminary presidents because... I know that three of them would, at least three of them would uh, identify as trusting in the sovereignty of God and salvation. So if we just want to use that as short term. A lot of people hate the word Calvinism. Uh, it's just shorthand for saying you believe God is sovereign in salvation. Um, it means a lot more than that, but that's how most people kind of interpret it today. Now... Another one from Denny Burke, and that's probably enough. But the SBC, let's pray for them. Pray that the SBC would return to scriptural fidelity. Pray that these people who keep showing up to the convention and voting against 
important doctrine, then that they would repent, that God would reveal this to them, that the things that they're keeping the status quo in the SBC, that it's not glorifying to him. And right now, you know, at the same time, the PCA, Presbyterian Church in America, they're having their annual meeting too. It's called General Assembly. And they have a lot of the same problems the SBC does, but it's not as magnified because they're not as big. And it's not as blatant because they all, in theory, adhere to a much more robust confession of faith than Southern Baptists do. Southern Baptists, like I said, by default, adhere to the Baptist Faith and Message 2000. Your PCA churches all are required to adhere to the Westminster Standards, the Westminster Confession of Faith, Shorter Catechism, Larger Catechism. So by that, they have a little more doctrinal, a little more doctrinal uh, unity. Um, a lot of churches in the Southern Baptist Convention maybe would say they don't adhere to it, the 2000 Baptist Faith and Message. And the 2000 Baptist Faith and Message is a very broad confession. So it means that people with a lot of different perspectives can adhere to it uh, without ha causing an argument. And it was intentionally written that way because there are so many different theological perspectives in the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, another thing is that in the PCA, they're required to be seminary trained. Not every um, pastor, and probably most pastors in the SBC, are not seminary trained. And sometimes that's good, sometimes that's, that's not as good. Uh, I mean, I'm an I'm an elder at Bass Chapel. I'm not the main preaching pastor. I'm not seminary trained. I've taken like a couple of seminary classes. Um, pastor Dave's not seminary trained. Now, seminary is good for some people and bad for some people. It depends on where you went to seminary too. There are a lot of liberal seminaries, um, and you could look at that in the SBC too, in where and when you graduated. You know, did you graduate from Southern Seminary in 1980 or, or in 2005? Those are totally different schools, even though it's the same school. So what year did you graduate? Who were your professors? What theology did you bring into seminary? But nonetheless, it's a little more rigorous process being ordained in the PCA than in the SBC. And anybody can be a messenger if you're a member in the SBC. The only people that go to the General Assembly are elders. And they would break it down into teaching elders, which is like the main preaching pastor, and ruling elders, which would be like the lay elders. Um, those are the only people who go to General Assembly to speak and to vote on things. Members can go, but they're not going to vote. Um, but anyway, that has been SBC24, hashtag Palooza. Y'all have a great week, and if the Lord wills it, we'll see you at Bass Chapel. <laughs>